Speaker, this is a budget that needs to be condemned. Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Paul Goldsmith. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise uh, in uh, support of this great budget. Uh, and interesting to follow on from David Parker, who uh, has been uh, uh, studying uh, in the United States for the past few, few weeks, and I thought, I'd hoped that he'd come back to New Zealand better informed with some fresh ideas, but instead we've got the same old monotonous line about uh, our record over the last 50 years. Well, hello, Mr Parker. Hello, Mr Parker. The GFC has been the worst crisis internationally for 70-odd years, but the good news is that this budget confirms that New Zealand is on the right track. Our, our growth is amongst uh, the best in the OECD. Unemployment is falling. Real wages are rising, Mr Speaker. Inflation is subdued, and interest rates are the lowest in decades. And the government books... Uh, will be returning to surplus in 2014 and 15, as we promised. And sure, these are not boom times. Uh, retailers in Newmarket uh, and around Auckland and New Zealand are still facing headwinds, and everybody knows that. But most fair-minded New Zealanders agree that the results of this budget are indeed promising and relatively good in a difficult international context. And that good result is, was by no means guaranteed. It's easy to forget that when John Key and National entered government at the end of 2008, when I was still happily writing books in Auckland uh, at the early years of the global financial crisis, Treasury projected 10 years of deficits and rising debt. The previous government had increased spending by an amazing 50% over a short period. The books, the New Zealand's uh, government, government's books were pregnant with uh, expensive new schemes never properly funded which led New Zealand to be in debt for 10 years or deficits for 10 years projected. So to have turned that around uh, uh, so that this year's deficit will be less than 1% of GDP and next year will yield a surplus uh, is an achievement of which we can all be proud, Mr Speaker. Contrast that with Australia, which uh, has just announced a $20 billion deficit this year, and with many other comparable countries, uh, such as the United States and the UK, where there is no end in sight to deficits, is a remarkable achievement for New Zealand. I hear the Labour uh, members opposite saying that they would have done the same. Uh, yeah, right. We don't believe that for a moment. They have opposed every control and uh, 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 limit that we've placed on spending, every scheme that we've tried to get spending under control, they've opposed it. Uh, perhaps uh, their idea is just to increase taxes. Uh, well, how's that working in France? Uh, not very well, as far as I can see. Uh, maybe a capital gains tax uh, uh, on productive businesses uh, they think is a good idea, but I certainly don't see that's a good way to uh, increase and promote savings in this country, which they say that they're concerned about. I'm particularly proud uh, overall that the adjustment that we've made in this budget has been achieved uh, without resort to the excessive austerity that we've seen in other parts of the world. Uh, we've returned to surplus has been achieved carefully uh, without undermining growth and while we continue to support the most vulnerable in New Zealand society. Uh, there's been no gimmicks. Uh, this government holds to the traditional, no traditional notion that a country has to earn its money, it can't simply print it, and the only way to pay our way in the world is to produce goods and services that free consumers out there want to buy. And so this government is focused on doing the basics well. It's about building a productive and competitive economy. And I'm happy to take the House through uh, the core elements of the business growth agenda, uh, uh, which people have heard about a number of times over the last few years, focuses on what businesses need to grow and thereby increase exports and employ New Zealanders with good, high-paying jobs. It's about ensuring access to export markets, uh, innovation, uh, more of which I'll talk about later. It's about skilled and safe workforces, uh, tr uh, such as trades training schemes that we're investing a lot of money in. It's about uh, access to capital markets, and uh, we've given a shot in the arm to that area with the mighty river power flotation. Natural resources, about which we hear uh, in the Denison Plateau right at the moment, again opposed by the Greens and their friends in Labour, and infrastructure. And the Waterview Tunnel that uh, we had the sod turning of only a few days ago will reduce traffic enormously upon the streets of Epsom and throughout uh, Auckland is a, a very good example of the investment that we're making in infrastructure in this country. So it's all about 
uh, as well as uh, um, those things, it's about delivering better public services without increasing spending in most areas. And a good example of that is in the area of police, uh, where, where, uh, where crime reported, recorded crime is at a 24 low in this country, and we're rolling out new technology for frontline police officers, but the baseline funding for police hasn't been increased. Instead, police have found more efficient and effective ways of doing their jobs and generating savings that we can reinvest. And governments should be judged on the quality of what they achieve rather than the vast amounts of uh, uh, which they spend. And this government has understood that as every other business person uh, who has to survive on their wits uh, has understood for a long time. Uh, health and education, once more, uh, received the lion's share of the new spending in the budget with considerable resources, some uh, 200 million also being pumped into science and innovation. And we're signalling that ACC levy cuts that will benefit families and business groups across New Zealand will be uh, coming in the next couple of years. We're expecting a 300 million reduction in 2014 and 15, and around about a billion the following year. And as a small business operator myself in the past, I know how painful ACC levies are. The invoices always arrive at the most inconvenient time, and I'm very proud to be part of a government that, uh, because of the improved performance of the way that we've managed the ACC and uh, led to better rehabilitation rates, we can uh, sustainably reduce those uh, levies over time, and I hope we can go further on that score. Mr Speaker, this uh, budget also includes uh, the proceeds of the first partial asset sale, some $1.7 billion for Mighty River Power, and that money is going into the Future Investment Fund for investment in new capital assets, such as the redeveloped uh, hospitals in Christchurch. And uh, so that uh, partial efforts, as, asset sale allows us to have these new assets without borrowing more on global markets, and thereby it reduces our, our vulnerability to a sudden change of sentiment in these dangerous times. And I have no doubt as well that the scrutiny of the share market will improve the business performance of Mighty River Power and, over time, the electricity market in general. I'm still shocked. Uh, frankly, Mr Speaker, by the uh, Labour, government, uh, Labour uh, Party and Greens uh, proposal over uh, power. I, I expect that sort of thing from the Greens, but I, I had thought that since the 1980s there had been an understanding uh, within the major parties of this country uh, that heavy-handed regulation had failed in the 1970s and uh, that uh, markets were the best way to get an efficient um, a system in, in, in power and education. But Labour, Labour seems to have uh, withdrawn from that basic understanding, and I am shocked and deeply saddened by that. The real focus also in the budget has been on supporting low-income families. Uh, budget 2013 signals our intent to grow the social housing sector, as well as a further $100 million has been invested in warmer, healthier homes for those in need. Already there are some 215,000 homes across the country from deep in the south up into the north that are warmer because of this government scheme. And so I'm proud to be a part of that. Addressing Auckland's housing affordability affordability issues was another part of this budget, and rightly so. And my aunt in Fielding might well ask why on earth should she care about Auckland house prices? They're cheap down there. Well, the answer is uh, she'll care if runaway house prices in Auckland leads to higher interest rates for all New Zealanders. And she'd certainly care if those higher interest rates, if they were to come sooner than they needed to, uh, led to the New Zealand, uh, New Zealand dollar being higher than it needed to and putting further pressure on the economy as a whole. So getting on top of Auckland housing affordability and the bubble that we're seeing, potentially seeing in Auckland with 12 per cent growth in the, la in the past year is an important focus of this budget. And it's a real worry uh, that thousands of Aucklanders are struggling to progress up the housing ladder. ladder. And so the government's housing response has been grounded in the work of the Productivity Commission, uh, and it's focused on, uh, particularly upon, upon increasing the supply of land. And uh, I, constantly we hear people denying that there is a link between rigid land supply policies and house prices when you only have to look at the evidence. Uh, in the last 10 years, the availability of sections in Auckland have plummeted over the past 10 years, and the price of sections have increased over the past five years from about $100,000 to $325,000 today. 
and uh, we're only currently building 4,000 houses when we need 13,000 odd. And so the government's uh, building initiatives, budget initiatives on housing and the housing accord that it signed with Auckland Council, that it's working on with Auckland Council, provide a circuit breaker to get some pace and momentum back into addressing housing supply in the Auckland region. And I'm sure that will make a real difference difference to the lives of many Aucklanders who are, are wanting to get onto that housing ladder. Mr Speaker, National is building towards a stronger, more stable economy uh, and it continues to work on building a brighter future for all New Zealanders. I commend it to the House. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Reno Tirakatini. Tirakatini, Mr Speaker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Talofa lava.